Welcome back, forensic students. In today's lesson, we're going to be introduced to some of the equipment, lab equipment, that we'll see this year in the lab. We're going to learn the names of these pieces of equipment, as well as their proper use and function. And this equipment is going to be very specific to what we're going to be learning in this forensics course this year. So we're not going to cover a lot of the things that you may have covered in biology or physical science. Some of this stuff you will have covered because it's um, used throughout many different science courses. But some of this stuff will be new to you because it's used specifically for forensics. Now, if you're in class with me, we're going to do this uh, little introduction activity, but if you're just listening to get the lesson, we're going to keep moving. All right, so the first piece of equipment that you need to make sure that you know is the beaker, um, and this is one that you might be familiar with. So a beaker is going to hold substances for us. It can also be used to measure substances. So a lot of times with beakers, you can have many different sizes of beakers. Um, for us in this class, we stick to 250 milliliter beakers, sometimes 500 milliliter beakers, but we really don't get any larger than that or any smaller than 250 milliliters. Um, on the outside or the exterior of the beaker, there will be measurements displayed, and that's how you know, like if you have to put 50 milliliters of water into the beaker, you can measure directly with the beaker. That'll be different with the test tube. I'll share that in just a second. You can't measure directly into the test tube. You'll have to use like a graduated cylinder to measure out what the volume of the liquid you need before you put it in the test tube. But the great thing about a beaker is you can measure directly inside the beaker. Um, so our beakers are going to be used a lot of times for heating substances. A beaker has a flat bottom, which makes it really useful if you want to heat substances because you can just set it on a hot plate. Now our test tube, our test tubes are typically made of glass. Some are plastic. For the ones that we use mostly this year, they'll be made of glass. Um, typically test tubes, they can have measurements on the outside, but typically they do not. So if you need to measure out 50 milliliters of a solution to pour into your test tube, you might have to use a graduated cylinder to get those measurements and then transfer that into your test tube. Uh, the purpose of a test tube is really just to hold substances for testing. Uh, we can hold substances that need to be heated. We can hold substances that need to be mixed. Um, and then we can just hold substances that need to be tested. And I'm thinking about like a toxicology lab that we'll do later where you have to test things in a test tube. Um, and it, the purpose of the test tube for that particular lab is just, just hold our substances. We're going to be using gloves a lot this year for a lot of different things. Uh, the purpose of gloves, of course, is to protect our hands. Um, and we're going to use gloves in the lab, but we're also going to use gloves out in the field. So this year in forensics, we're going to be out and about doing a lot of investigation work. And in a lot of those little mock crime scenes and investigations, gloves are going to be required. Forceps on the street, these are sometimes called tweezers, but in the science lab, these are called forceps. And forceps are just going to help us grab small objects. In the world of forensics, this helps us grab onto trace evidence that we need to collect um, and then put away or package as evidence. A thermometer is going to be used to measure temperature. Uh, we can have digital thermometers we'll use this year. You may be asked to use like the traditional thermometer. Either way, um, we'll be measuring temperature. Now, some of the labs that we're going to do, we'll have to measure the temperature of a solution, or I'm thinking about in our death investigation unit, we've got an algor mortis lab where we're going to have to get something up to a certain temperature. And of course, we're going to use the thermometer for that. Um, but when we also get to our death investigation unit, which is at the very end of the course, we'll use a thermometer to to um, calculate what's called ambient temperature or ambient temperature. And what this is, is like the environmental temperature. So when investigators work a crime scene, they're going to want to know the temperature of the surrounding environment. They call that ambient temperature, and a thermometer is going to help us do that. <laughs> 
We use pipettes in a ton of labs this year. Uh, so pipettes are going to help us transfer small amounts of liquids from one place to another. Most of the pipettes that we use are going to be plastic disposable pipettes, um, but some are glass and they come with like a little rubber stopper at the top. We might see both, but either way, um, pipettes are used to transfer small amounts of liquids. Earlier, we talked about test tubes. Uh, if we have to hold, if we have to have something to hold our test tubes, um, or we're testing multiple chemicals at a time or most multiple things um, in test tubes at a time, we might want to use a test tube rack. So a test tube rack just holds more than one test tube so we don't have to hold it in our hands. Now in our last lesson, we talked about lab safety symbols, and one of the lab safety symbols that we discussed was the um, safety goggle symbol or the glassware safety, not glassware safety. You would have to wear goggles with the, the glassware safety symbol, but uh, we talked about the safety goggle symbol, and that just means that you're going to be working with either glassware or heat or fire or chemicals, and you need to wear something to protect your eyes. Um, and so safety goggles are what we use in the science classroom to do that. A magnifying glass, this is going to be useful to us in this course because a magnifying glass is going to help us enlarge objects that are difficult to see. Um, so if we are doing an investigation where you have to find trace evidence, um, a magnifying glass might help us do that. I know when we talk about fingerprints, sometimes it's difficult to see the ridge patterns on fingerprints, and so we use magnifying glasses to help us enlarge those prints so that we can identify different minutia patterns. If we need to really magnify something, so I'm thinking about in our hair unit and in our fibers unit, if we need to magnify something larger than what a magnifying glass could, could magnify an object, we're going to use a microscope. And now we're going to dig deeper into the microscope in a whole nother lesson. Um, so I'm just going to leave it here. A microscope magnifies small objects. Now with a magnifying glass, or excuse me, with a microscope, we're going to need something to hold the specimen that we're trying to enlarge, and that's going to be a microscope slide. So microscope slides come in plastic, they can come in glass, we'll use both this year, um, and we're going to put whatever specimen we want to enlarge on the microscope slide, and then we're going to cover it with something called a cover slip. Again, cover slips can come in both plastic and glass. Again, we will use both this year, um, but the cover slip protects the specimen and our microscope lenses from getting scratched. Um, and they all kind of work together to magnify the object. Again, we're gonna come back and do a, a complete lesson on the microscope and all the different parts of the microscope. And I'll teach you how to use the microscope. We'll do that at a later time. All right, a probe. So when we get to the very end of forensics, we're going to start on our dissection. We're going to do a pig autopsy, which is always a lot of fun. So in our autopsy unit, you're going to learn everything there is to know about an autopsy. And then we're going to do a fun little investigation where we dissect a pig. And you have to determine the manner of death, the cause of death, and the mechanism of death for that fetal pig. Um, this is always like the highlight of the course. So at the end of the year, we'll do that. But um, one of the things you need to make sure that you know is one of the pieces of uh, equipment that we're going to use is something called a probe. It's going to help us move around, separate, and even pin specimens during a dissection um, to the dissecting tray. And so you need to know what this tool is. I mentioned earlier, a graduated cylinder can help you measure the volume of liquids. Um, pretty precisely. So if you have to measure precisely and accurately, a graduated cylinder is going to help you do that. We're going to use rulers quite a bit this year uh, in forensics. So we're going to use a metric ruler most of the time. Uh, the metric ruler measures length. We're going to use a variety of different rulers. We'll have some larger meter sticks and then we'll have some smaller ones. Like we're talking about blood spatter and you have smaller blood drop drops and you have to measure the diameter of those. We'll use smaller metric rulers. Um, we will mostly use metric measurements for length like centimeters and millimeters. Occasionally you'll have to use um, meters. 
There is an exception though. So earlier in some of our early, our, um, early lessons for forensics, we're going to talk about a process known as triangulation. We're going to talk about how to sketch a crime scene. And those measurements, we use a standard system of measurement. So we're going to use feet and inches for triangulation and our crime scene sketches. But everything else this year, we'll use the metric system. Micro centrifuge tubes, these are pieces of equipment that hold really small specimens or small evidence. In unit one, we're going to do like an introduction to forensics where we talk about how to process a crime scene and collect evidence. And some of the evidence that we will collect will be so small that it has to be placed in a small container. And so these micro centrifuge tubes are a great way to store trace evidence that's really small. Uh, there are also some labs that we do this year where we pretend to be the lab and we've got evidence that has been collected from a crime scene and it's sent to our lab for testing and it will come to us in these micro centrifuge tubes. There's a couple times that we'll use the hot plate this year. This is an electrical appliance used to heat substances. Now, for our case this year, for the labs that we do, typically we'll be using water. We'll be heating water on these hot plates. At the end of the year, again, we're going to uh, have a couple of labs in our death investigation unit where you're going to have to use a scalpel to cut or slice a specimen. This is a really sharp object, so we're going to want to pair this with our sharp instrument safety lab symbol and precautions. Um, but this is what a scalpel looks like, and it's sort of like a really, really sharp knife. Digital balance, we use this a ton in all science classes. Um, forensics is no exception, so there will be times where we have to me measure the mass of a substance. We use grams as our unit of measurement when we are measuring mass, and we use a digital balance to help us do that. Sterile tip applicators, these look like little Q-tips, but they are sterile, which is important for the world of forensics. Um, these are going to be used to collect samples like DNA or if we're working a crime scene and we have an unknown liquid that we want to try to test, we'll collect um, uh, samples of that liquid on the sterile tip applicator. When we get into our arson investigation unit, a lot of times investigators will swab accelerants. Uh, using these sterile tip applicators, and then they're sent for testing. All right, that ends our lesson for today. I will see you in the next lesson.